Hello and welcome back to All The Mods 9, our magical modded adventure. This is episode 2, and in this series we are focusing on magic. We're going to be avoiding any high technology. Basically, we're going to see if we can rely on the magical mods available in All The Mods 9 to conquer this mod pack. We're going to build a massive magical compound in this wonderful forest clearing that we have here. And we're going to be using the magical mods to become great and powerful wizards. If you want to join along with me, check out episode 1 where we have the world seed and all you'll need to make this All The Mods 9 world on your computer at home. Now we're going to hit the ground running. To set up our magical compound, we're going to have to build some pretty cool buildings. In the end, I kind of want a building for every different magical mod we're going to do. Mage towers, dungeons, elaborate farms, it's going to be amazing. And to get those buildings built, we are going to dip into mine colonies. Now don't worry, we're not building a massive colony this episode. All we're doing is building a town hall and a builder's hut, because the builder is a great way to get buildings built that you design yourself in creative mode. It's not cheating, you just design it in creative mode, and then get the builder to build it if you give him the materials. There are other ways to get builders to build stuff, but this is a low-tech way that kind of preserves our magical theme. So we're going to need the town hall block and the build tool, and it should be around here somewhere. Maybe it's upstairs. Aha, yes, here we are, the town hall and the build tool. Perfect, there's also some other bits and bobs up here. So let's find a spot to set up the town hall and the builder's hut. Now the style we're going to go for, because we're not going deep into mine colonies. We only want a good looking town hall and a good looking builder's hut. One that's going to stick with our magical theme, which is mostly going to be white, diorite and andesite. And I think Caledonia is a great choice for that. So we're going to get the build tool out, the town hall out and put down these buildings. Let's get rid of this ugly dirt. Come on, get out of here. Now, why am I picking Caledonia for the town hall? Well, let me load this up and upgrade it to level five to show you why. When this thing is level 5, it looks kind of like a pretty magical mage tower. It looks beautiful and amazing. So of course we absolutely want to build this. The camp isn't going to be here forever, we might actually get rid of it once we have everything else set up. But this is a great building to get started with, so let's make sure it's not interfering too much with the landscape. That looks okay, but we'll bring it forwards a bit because we don't want our builder to have too much of a hard time building this thing. But of course, he's only going to build it at level 1 to start with, so this looks great. Boom, so now we have the town hall down. It's time to start getting a few colonists that are going to help do the jobs around our compound and create new colony. Now, before we get going, we've got to set the name pack to French. Now, why French, I hear you say, and that's because basically I've removed all of the French names and put your colonist name submissions in. So basically there's a big list of all of you guys who have joined as Patreon members or as YouTube members. All of the names that you put in the community post or on the Patreon page go into this list. And as we can see, the first person to arrive is Haltamain Akizuki. So if you want to join the colony and be part of our magical compound, head on over to Patreon or the YouTube members community posts and add your name to the list and you could join our colony. Now we're also going to be changing the citizen style. I kind of like the idea of a Nordic style this time because we're surrounded by these pine trees. It's going to be a bit of a Nordic mage colony. That's what we're going to say. We also need a name for this colony because the name Shins Colony, it kind of sucks. So this is placeholder until you guys can come up with an amazing name in the comment section. So this episode, what I would love for you guys to do is head down to the comment section and post your own submission for what you think our grand mage compound should be called. Or if you like the look of somebody else's post, upvote that. And the comment with the most likes is what we're going to name our magical compound. Ah, hello, Usagi Reeves. Welcome to the crew. And this is the Nordic skin pack, and it looks pretty cool. So the town hall is here, but it won't get built until we have a builder's hut, so we're going to put down one of those as well. That's something we'll need to craft. Now all of the huts you need to make to build a mine colony's building usually consist of wood around the edge, something in the middle, and then the build tool on the top. And a door will get you a builder's hut. That's exactly what we want. Pretty fantastic. It's very small compared to this massive town hall. But oh my god, this looks so impressive. Can't wait to get this thing built. Who are the colonists that have arrived so far? We've got, oh, Klaus Sake. Whoa, love that face paint, bro. So let's see which one of our first dudes is going to be the best builder. 
Oh my god, wow, so the latest version of Mine Connollys has had a massive update. Look at all this UI. This looks fantastic. It might be worth dipping into a bit of uh, Mine Connollys to see what's changed. But we're going to remove Hultermain because he's not quite the best for the job. Well, we've got Cheesy Nerd, who's got low stats. Klaus Sake, 2 and 3, that's looking pretty good. But Usagi Reeves, with 3 as the primary and 2 as the secondary, I think that looks like our best bet. And this is what the Nordic Builder looks like. Oh man, looking fantastic. Oh wow, Cheesy Nerd, love that braid, looking like a true Valkyrie. Minus the armor, I suppose. So, Usagi Reeves. Oh, wow. So, in this version of Mine Colonies now, you can actually give all of your colonists their own set of armor, or even maybe some cosmetic upgrades. So, Usagi Reeves, let's put that to the test. I'm going to give you my fantastic straw hat. Hi. Oh, no, it's a cosmetic, so it doesn't work. Well, maybe you can take my chainmail hat. No. Okay, so it looks like Usagi can't wear chainmail. I guess chainmail is a bit too high level for them. They can probably only use leather at level one. Anyway, show me your inventory and let's give you the tools you're going to need to get going. So it's going to be a wooden axe, a wooden pickaxe and a wooden shovel. Wise. There we go, Usagi. All the tools of the trade. Now she's got the tools she's going to need to start clearing the area. But what she doesn't have are the building blocks she's going to need. So it needs oak, spruce, birch, spruce, spruce, lots of spruce. Lots of cobblestone and some strip logs. So we'll build that building and let's head on over and get some birch into one of these hopper pots because we're going to need loads and loads of birch, loads and loads of spruce. Now, if I remember rightly, there was a barrel up here that had, yeah, the saplings we're looking for. So spruce is what we need and a little bit of birch. And for now, we can probably replace some of these magical trees because in our chest, we have a whole bunch of these logs to get going with. So we'll just pull these out and put the woods in that we need. These saplings aren't going anywhere, and we can put them back in when we need them. But for now, they're going to be safe and sound in here. Now, what's the first building we're going to build with our builder? Once the builder's built the builder's hut, we'll get it to build the town hall. But then, we're going to start using our own custom blueprints. So what I've done is I've gone into my own little world, designed myself a pretty cool mage tower, and we can get the builder over there to eventually build it. We've got a nice big area over here. Might have to build some guard towers to expand this if we want to build further, but this looks like a nice flat spot for our Ars Nouveau Magical Mage Tower. So if we go over to Switch Pack, we select Skin or your character name is where you'll put your scans that you've made yourself for Mine Colonies. Now, the tower we are going for is called Lasting Integrity. It sounds like a really cool name for a mage tower, and I did steal it from my favorite series of books. But look at this bad boy. Oh, yeah. Now, it's not the most complicated of towers because the more complicated a build, the more time and effort your builder is going to have to make to get it built. But if we put this down on the floor, spin it around so the front door is here, you can see this is the great start. This is a great start for our Ars Nouveau tower. Now, it doesn't have a roof because this tower is going to be modular and I'm going to design a roof later. But for now, it comes with about one, two, three, four, five, six or so floors for us to get going with Ars Nouveau. Klaus Sake is very impressed. So right click, tick, assign this to Usagi Reeves. It's got a lot of materials though, look at this. 1,200 birch and that's just for the flooring. 2,300 stone bricks, loads of polished diorite. So we have a real shopping list on our hands to get this built. So the time has come for us to get started with Ars Nouveau, our very first magical mod and by the end of this episode, we'll be able to cast a few spells. Now, if you don't know where to start with Ars Nouveau, the quest log is always a great place. The All The Mods 9 quests do a great job of showing you how to get started with loads and loads of different mods. For example, there's a whole magic category down here. Occultism, Forbidden and Arcanus, Evil Craft Britannia, Blood Magic. Ooh, Blood Magic, I want to get into that. Apotheosis Enchantments and Ars Nouveau. So we should start where we want to start at Ars Nouveau. Now, there is a section of Ars Nouveau over here in the main quest chain that tells you to make a spell book. So we will be moving slowly towards that. So we'll need copper to unlock that quest and also we'll need to make an iron pickaxe, which I've already done, but we haven't reached that stage. So I have some copper ore lying around here somewhere. There it is. And an ore hammer, I believe I also have somewhere too. There it is. So we'll double this copper ore because why would you ever take less than the most you can make 
and slotted into this furnace. And with one copper ingot, we will enter the Metal Age. There we go, the Metal Age and an iron pick. And we've also struck diamonds because I found some in a chest. Lucky me. There we go. So basic ore doubling, we get a reward from that. It's a honeycomb. Not so great. But what's amazing and curious about these quests is sometimes when you get a quest reward, the reward will actually, oh wow, one oak log, that's terrible. But the quest reward will actually give you an item you need to progress a quest. So diamonds, we're going to get, ooh, one lapis, that's okay. And a diamond pick, which we also found in a chest. And that gets us, oh, a lava bucket, so we could set up another Easy Villager's Iron Farm. Also, we got redstone, and that's going to give us a beehive. Well, okay, it's something. But what we're doing now is getting magical. We're going to need to craft a novice spellbook. Basically, in Ars Nouveau, all of your spells are held inside a spellbook. It's the bread and butter, your main tool as an arcane wizard of Ars Nouveau. So what's the recipe for a spellbook? Well, spellbook. Oh, now there's a few. And also, these spellbooks come in tiers. We'll start with a novice, but we're going to upgrade this to a mages, then an arc mages, and I don't think we'll get to a creative spellbook. Because the recipe for that is pretty frickin' wild. But a novice spellbook is very achievable now that we have an iron farm, lots of iron tools, and a book. So into the crafting table on a stick, we're going to make the iron tools first. We'll need... A pickaxe, yes. We'll need a sword, also very important. Shovel and an axe. And for the ease, we're just gonna press the plus button and boom, the novice spellbook. There we go, quest complete. And doing this quest actually gives you a free glyph. So let's see what random glyph we get. We could be really lucky here, we could be not so lucky. Glyph of cut, well, that that's mid, it's an okay glyph. It's better than nothing, right? For free? That's great. Oh man, rain. Can I sleep through the rain? Is it a thunderstorm? Oh yes it is, luckily. Now by default in all the mods 9, your game will try and conflict the controls for spellbooks. So make sure you do go into controls and unmap the keys that are mapped to Z, X and C, except if they're for Ars Nouveau, because that's what you want. So basically, what is that noise? That is a spooky noise. That's a really spooky noise. Well, it's a problem for later. Right now I'm not getting attacked, so I'm not too worried. Ugh, but I will hide behind this piece of piece of stone. So with the spellbook in hand, you can press the C key and this will open up the spell interface. Spells come with forms, effects and also augments that can make the spell act differently. Now the basic spells I like to go with first are Touch Dig. Touch means that you can basically, it's a close range spell. And Break, which basically breaks a block. And we're gonna call this Touch Dig. Now this is assigned to spell slot 10, but we should probably assign this to spell slot one because it's the most important spell, I think. So there we go, and we'll put it in here as Touch Dig as well. Boom. Now, number two, we're going to have to create a damage spell. So we're going to go with projectile and harm. And it's not really a fireball, but it is a harm ball. So we're going to call it harm ball. Create. So now on slot one, we have touch dig. And on slot two, we have harm ball. Now, that's not all you can do. You can customize these spells. Give them a color. Now, I think our color is going to be... I think we might go for orange, actually. Orange is kind of my color, although my robes are green. Hmm. Yeah, maybe we'll go with green. I think green should be our color for this magical playthrough. So our spells are going to be green. There are also different sounds. And since we're going to be green, I guess we're going to be nature wizards. So we're going to go for the Gaia family of sound effects. Oh, actually, that's quite an abrasive sound. What about fire? Oh yeah, fire spells sound pretty cool. What about Tempest? Oh, that's very magical. But the default... Well, the default is much, much easier to listen to. So we're going to stick with the default because, yeah, the other ones are a bit loud and that's going to drain your ears. Wait, but you can even change the pitch. Oh, 
Okay, yeah. Or the volume as well. Now the bass volume is fine and the bass pitch is fine, so we'll keep it at that. And there's also documentation here in the spellbook as well. It tells you all about everything you need to know. So now we have the spellbook, but we want to get more spells. We need to do more than just dig and harm stuff. We need to do things like conjure mage light. So what we're going to need to do that is the scribes table. And the scribes table isn't too tricky to make, but you can see now this is why it was important that we picked up all those magical woods. We're going to need a couple of gold ingots and some archwood slabs and logs. Now anyone, any type of archwood should work, but we will go with blazing because that's what it said. Turn this into planks and then turn those into slabs. Now all we're missing is a gold ingot to turn into... Golden nuggets. There we go, perfect. Plonk this to the sides, the logs at the bottom, the slabs at the top, and we have the scribes table. Now we don't have our magical mage tower built, so for now we're going to set up shop in our camp and put the scribes table somewhere inside. I reckon here looks like a fine spot. There we go, perfect! So how does the scribes table work? Well you right click on it with your book in hand, it's got to be with the book, otherwise it won't work. And this will show you all the different types of spells we can cast. You can sort them by tiers 1, 2 and 3. And basically, to cast level 2 tier spells, you need a level 2 spell book. We only have tier 1, and these are all the glyphs available to us. Oh wow, filters, not summon, not undead, fireproof, toss, summon wolves, very cool, summon steed, amazing. Spark, snare, rune, rotate. There are a ton of these different glyphs that you can use, and the possibilities are almost endless with the kinds of spells you can make. But we want to make a light spell so we don't have to carry around torches all the time. So, Conjure Mage Light is the glyph we want to make. When you click on the glyph, it will show you the materials you need to provide the table to make the glyph. A lantern and a torch is definitely well within our possibilities. So, we'll go and find some charcoal. There should be some in one of these furnaces and make a torch or two. Torches are always useful, or well, pretty soon they won't be. And also a lantern. And if I remember right, lantern just requires iron, right? Yeah, here we go. We need to surround it with iron nuggets. So with these two items in our hand, we go over to the scribe's table and we just literally toss these items at the table. You can see they're spinning around above the table and they'll go away once we provide them. So there's the torch, there's the lantern, the quill comes out, it gets some ink magically, and it crafts us a glyph. And now with the glyph in our hand, we can right click, and it will add it, whoops, to our spell retinue. So we got mage light, and we got cut. Very cool. Now key to remember is there's also quests to do these things. If we go into quests now, we've done the mage quest, but we can go over here on the left, find the Ars Nouveau tree. And here we go. So we'll select the first one, get that done, boom. It gives us a worn notebook, which is basically a guide. But don't worry, you guys at home don't need a guide because you've got me. So we built a spell book. And for that reward, we're going to get a mana generation potion and some XP. Great stuff. We also got some archwood logs. And that's going to give us, oh, a sapling, but we've already got the saplings, so again, nothing we need to worry about. We also built the scribe's table, and this is going to give us another random tier 1 glyph. And this one is, ooh, the glyph of harvest. That could come in useful. And also, there are quests to get every single glyph in the game. So we'll start to unlock these. Boom, give me that. Give me that. And give me that. And we can select these other glyphs from tier 1 that we've already gathered. Now the rewards from these aren't super amazing, it's just XP. But it's a lot of XP, 100. So to progress through Ars Nouveau, we can basically just plow through this little quest chain. And now that we have our spell book and our scribes table with a few glyphs unlocked, we can start looking at some of the machines involved in Ars Nouveau. And that starts with an imbuement chamber. To create one of the main crafting items in ours, the Source Gem, which is used for a lot of things, we'll need to make an imbuement chamber. 
So, an imbuement chamber, here we go. Now this is where things get a little bit expensive. So, with everything in Ars Nouveau, if you literally go here and type Ars, you'll notice a lot of these recipes or icons over here look kind of golden. And that's for good reason. Basically, all of these things you'll craft do have gold somewhere in the recipe. That's the real resource of Ars Nouveau. And it's kind of cool because gold isn't really used in many tech mods, not really that much, maybe for circuits and circuit boards, but in general, gold is a generally underused resource. So we need to go on the hunt for gold now. It's getting to night, so we'll have a sleep. But we have a mage book, so we can cast... Wait a minute, let's add another spell. To slot number three, we're going to add projectile, light, and this is mage light. And now we can create lights, as long as we have mana, just by right-clicking with the spell book. There it is. Now that's pink, and we're green wizards, so I kind of want to change that. Color picker and green, here we go. And what this should do now is give us green mage lights. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's our color. Now, if you're playing multiplayer with your friends, you can basically teach any of your friends the glyphs you know by using an annotated codex. If you craft one of these, use it. It will store all of the glyphs you know in this book. Then you give that to another player and they can use it to get all of your glyphs. It's a great way to make sure your friends are keeping up with you in the mod. So boom, the hunt for gold. We've got a way to defend ourselves with harm ball. We're gonna get some more armor. We're gonna get some more iron out of here because we are gonna need a set of armor. It's not very magey, but a set of iron armor will keep us safe for the moment. Now we're looking good. Well, no, we're not looking good actually. And cosmetically, we can probably just hide this armor set because it looks kind of ugly. And also the straw hat looks a bit ugly too. Can I hide that? Yeah, there we go. Now I'm looking pretty cool. All right, so we've got a hole down here. I reckon there's going to be gold in that hole that we found earlier. We've got a spell book. Wait a minute. If we're going to be green wizards, I can't go rocking around with a purple spell book. Bam, one green die. Now combine this with our spell book and suddenly our spell book is green. That's more our color. Okay, let's head down the hole and get some gold. So we can use the keys now to switch between mage light, but also what's cool is you can have, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another spell on spell slot 4, which is going to be self conjure mage light. And what this is going to do, we're going to call it self glow. And what this does is it gives yourself a glow, which is kind of basically like night vision. Look, well, it gives you night vision, literally. So 30 seconds of night vision is pretty cool. Now, Touch Dig is pretty powerful. It functions at the moment at the level of an iron pickaxe, which means we can actually get this prosperity ore, which is great. This is going to be important for mystical agriculture. Oof. Now, I didn't clear my pack, so be right back. Oh, no! H Ultimane was shot by a pillager! Wait, we've got pillagers here? Well, time to get Harmball out and defend our colony. Where are these guys? Oh my god, pillagers. What a nightmare. Get out of here, scum. You messed with the wrong wizard. Oh, Haltamine, I'm sorry, bro. There we go, knowledge of death. But this spell, as you can see, is pretty powerful. Oh, and there's a skeleton. In fact, oh my god, oh no, Usagi Reeves, the builder. Oh man. Skeletons. We're gonna have to get some mega torches down stats. So let's get the builder's stuff. And oh, Spamanti Mahogany, the legend that created the Byzantine build pack. Well, you know what? He's a legendary builder in real life, so I reckon he's probably a pretty good builder in mine colonies as well. So we'll go over here to the builder's hut, manage workers, and oh yeah, yes, yeah, Spamanti Mahogany is the builder. So monsters are going to spawn while we're away from our colony, and those guys can't defend themselves. They're pretty freaking useless. So we've got to keep an eye on the clock at the top right to make sure we are sleeping through the night. Even though we're down in the mine, we cannot have our colonists getting destroyed. Oh, uh, cool, a monster with a jukebox. We're just going to dodge you, my friend. So let's get out mage light and start lighting this place up again. Now this is going to be our cave where we're going to come to do a lot of mining. So I want to light up as much of this as possible to make sure we don't get any more of these spiders approaching. While Harmball is a great damage spell, sometimes this pretty cool sword that we've got is going to do the job a little bit better. Oh, Creeper. But we want range for the Creeper, so definitely a bit of Harmball for him. Yeah, rip. Oh, 
Ooh, now if you accidentally hit a monster, you can make the monsters glow, which uh, doesn't really do much, but I imagine it upsets them. And I like upsetting monsters, so there we go. Who are you? What are you? Oh, it's one of those weird things. Oh, and he's found the diamond. Cool. Ripping pepperoni, bro. Are you, are you caught in some cobweb? Oh, sucks to be you. Oh my god, a zombie brute. This thing's huge. Luckily, again, he's caught in the cobweb. So you'll see, as I'm casting these spells, in the bottom left, my mana is going down. Mana regenerates quite quickly, but you don't have a massive amount when you start. Certain things you do in Ars Nouveau are going to increase your magical level, which means you can get more mana and quicker mana regen. But for now, ooh, we're kind of stuck with base level mana. It mostly comes in the form of like magical robes will give you more mana regeneration. There's also trinkets like rings, necklaces and amulets that will increase your mana generation as well. Now we are going to see our colonists die. It's going to happen a lot. We're going to go through a lot of these bad boys right in the beginning just because monsters are a real issue early on. We'll have to get some mega torches down. So already I see some gold. That's great news. We'll get touch dig out and put it to use. Now the one thing that kind of sucks is you cannot use ultimine with touch dig. So in some ways it's inferior, but it's also free. There's no durability on these spells, so you can use them as long as you have mana, and mana just regenerates, and that's great. So gold is the primary resource we're going for. Not everything can be dug with Touch Dig though. You will need to use the Amplify... Oh, Ripperoni, cheesy nerd. Oh man, our guys are getting wrecked up there. Oh, looks like the skeleton upset the spider. Big mistake, bro. That spider's gonna destroy you. Oh no, the skeleton wins. Well, no, he loses. Oh, what's this? Runic Deep Slate. This needs a diamond pickaxe, which we don't actually have. Didn't put it in my backpack, but interesting. Remember this is here. That could be rare. Touch dig, get gold. Ah oh, man, I love a mining trip. There's nothing more cathartic and digging for gold. The inner dwarf in me is screaming with joy. Now also lapis is pretty important and that works with touch dig as well. So we'll grab this stuff too. Basically, oh, look at this and deep slate diamonds and we can use touch dig to get diamonds as well. That's great. Okay, well, I've got diamonds. I've got gold. It's time to head home and put this to good use. So we want all of the gold. We're going to get the copper ore hammer out of here and we're going to turn all of this raw gold might break the hammer, but into gold dust, ooh, very close, that we can get smelted up. This is a stack and a half of gold. That's a crazy amount. Great job, great mining expedition. So now we can get started with the next part of Ars Nouveau. We're gonna be making imbuement chambers. We're gonna need a few of these. In fact, you kind of end up needing a load of these, like six, seven, eight, nine, ten, something like that, because you wanna use these to make source gems and you need a lot of source gems. So we'll need some arcane wood. We're going to use some of these flourishing archwood logs, I reckon. Turn them into planks. And then I believe the recipe was planks along the side with the ingots on the top and the bottom. And boom. And let's start with four of these. Now again for now, because the mage tower hasn't been built yet, we're going to plonk these over in the corner of the camp. So one, two, three, four. Here we go. The imbuement chamber. So how does this work? Well, this will turn lapis lazuli into source gems. Luckily, we just got some lapis from our mining trip. So I can just right click on these. And in there, you can see the lapis is slowly being turned into a source gem. The crafting progress is very slow, very slow indeed. You can speed this up by giving it mana and it's very mid game. For now though, we just want the source gems. That's the big next step. So great news. These lapis now have been turned into source gems. This is pretty important and it's unlocked a quest. Let's complete that quest, get some sweet, sweet rewards. So we built the imbuement chamber that gives us some archwood planks. Pretty lame, but the source gems, that's going to give us ooh, a random essence. We got water essence, great. 
and it's going to give us some more source gems to work with. That's really good news. So once you have the source gems, you can start working on your mana apparatus. This is what you use to actually gather mana from the world via various means. Mana in Ars Nouveau is also a power source. So think like Redstone Flux or FE, which I don't know what that stands for. But um, yeah, and you can basically use different tools to make source. Oh, it's, it's source, not mana. Okay, so source is the name of the power. So agronomic makes source from the growth of plants. That's very good. Mycelial uses nearby food to make source. Alchemical source link uses potions to generate source. Vitalic generates source from mob deaths. So if we have a mob grinder, that's great. And Volcanic doesn't have a tooltip, but what this does is it basically uses things that burn. These are all really cool tools and they're a great way of automating mana generation. But we can't really dip into mana generation until we have a place to set up our mage stuff. And that's why we're gonna need to wait for the mage tower to get built. Now we're going to need a lot of stone bricks, a lot of smelting is going to need to be done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upgrade these furnaces from stone. Let's just get the gold out, delicious stuff. But we're going to set up like a pretty simple ad hoc automated smelting system. This is going to be pretty cool and pretty excited to get this done. I have some spare pipes somewhere from the pipes mod. So let's gather the things we're going to need to do this. I'm going to need some more botany hopper pots, I'm going to need some more pipes, I'm going to need some furnaces and a couple of chests. And we'll do this just outside here for now. So basically what we want is first up a bunch of smelters to actually smelt the stuff. These are gonna be our smelters for smelting the items that we want. We also want a smelter to create the fuel. So we put a furnace here. This is gonna need a botany hopper pot that feeds wood and things that burn into the furnace. So we'll put that there. An item pipe is gonna come over here and suck the stuff into the furnace. Then this item pipe is gonna bring this over as the fuel. Now with the wrench, we can kind of make sure that these don't interact with the things we don't want them to. Like, there we go, nice. This is gonna pull. And we don't need to push because things push automatically. But again, this is gonna pull from the botany hopper pot. In goes the acacia, we need some dirt, so you, my friend, will do. Boom, and now we're making acacia logs. Then we'll put a chest above this and put an item pipe in here that's gonna feed out of the chest into the furnace. So basically we're using logs to smelt logs that'll make charcoal. And we don't need this extra furnace right now. Wait a minute, this pipe is pulling from the furnace and putting acacia logs in here instead. So a basic furnace isn't very configurable and it isn't very great. So why don't we upgrade these furnaces to iron furnaces? There's a quest for them as well. So that sounds like a good move. So how do we make an iron furnace? Well, it's pretty simple. It's just a regular furnace surrounded by iron. And again, we have so much iron. There's no reason why every single furnace we have shouldn't be an iron furnace. So boom, three of these. We could even go to gold, and since we've kind of got lots and lots of gold, that might be a good choice, because we're gonna need so much stone brick. Wait a minute. Oh no, so this needs a block and ingots. Well, it's probably still worth it, you know. We're gonna get loads of gold in that cavern. So let's do it. One gold furnace is gonna be enough. So let's replace this furnace now with an iron one. Here we go. Is this gonna work? Is this gonna be much more configurable? Yes, augments, open config. Right, so bottom is the fuel input. Top is the input and the right is the output. This should work, okay, yeah. So iron furnaces are needed because the vanilla furnaces just aren't that great. Then we'll replace this furnace with the real beast, the gold one. Get the wrench out, start to configure this. So you're gonna suck from here, my friend. And let's see if this works. Charcoal is being sucked out and put into the golden furnace. Amazing, this is exactly what we want. So we want a pipe over here to suck out of the furnace the finished product. And we're gonna want a way to put the items we're gonna put into here into the top 
So we're just going to use another one of these. Make it so it doesn't connect to that one. Perfect. And a chest on top of here. So let's get some cobblestone now and test this system. So we literally just come over here. Whatever we want to smelt, we put in the top. Set the pipe to suck. And there we go. It's, oh my God, this is a good smelt speed. This is why we need charcoal, because we would not get enough from the logs. So a final chest over here to store all of our misbegotten gains. Make sure the gold furnace is set to output to the right. The pipe wrench to suck. And boom, we're getting stone at an amazing rate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this chest with loads and loads of cobblestone. And I'm going to go on a mission to find some diorite. Then with the architect's cutter, I can get the building blocks we need to get the mage tower built. And maybe we can time lapse that build next episode. So thank you for watching episode two. Massive progress this session. We discovered spell books, some of the uh, imbuement chambers from Ars Novo as well. We made our first spells, went on a bit of a mining expedition, got loads of gold, and we set up this pretty simple, kind of complicated, but pretty amazing auto smelting system. Plus the builder's hut's been built, and we've got some new colonists in the form of Chicken Stony and Sclerbetha Lazarus. So if you do want to join our mini magical colony, do make sure you become a Patreon member or a YouTube member, find the posts on the community page or the Patreon page, and add your name to the list. It should be pretty easy to find. If you don't know how to find it, pop onto our Discord server and just ask me or one of the mods. They'll be able to help you out. A massive thank you for watching this episode. We're making loads of progress in this series and I'm really excited to see where things go. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and I will see you next time. But until then, take care my friends.